what we're here to talk about today is the fact that the brain is and will be the 21st century battlescape in many ways. End of story. You will encounter some form of neurocognitive science that has been weaponized not only in your military career, but in your personal and professional lives. It is valid, valuable, and already an operational play. The brain is the current and future battle space. What's new about this is the in-close nature of this. Increasingly, we're not seeing these things as weapons of mass destruction against gross aspects of the population. More specifically, perhaps, might be targeting individuals on a level that allows either direct attribution or covert engagement with non-attribution. If we talk about what brain science is, let me just give you a little bit of brief background on this field that is now called neuroscience. As a titular field, as a named field, neuroscience has only been in existence for 40 years. I know that because I've been a neuroscientist for about 38 of those 40 years. Increasingly, it is becoming an international, multinational, global, and independently exercised event and endeavor which increases the capability of the brain sciences to develop not only new theories, but ever more sophisticated tools. So how then can we use these elements as weapons, means of contending against others? Formal definition of a weapon, probably the one that you've heard about most recently, most contemporaneously in, in the literature, is the possibility to use some form of directed energy to affect physiology peripherally and also to affect the physiology and health of the brain. Case in point here, U.S. Embassy personnel in Havana and possibly in China. Clearly, one of the things we can also do is transcranial neuromodulation, the idea of going through the skull to modulate the node and network activity of the brain, to implant certain brain-machine interfaces. These are many of the DARPA programs that you may hear of now. Probably the one that is most notorious is something called the N3 program, which is the non-invasive neurosurgical neuromodulation program being run by their program manager, Dr. Al Mundi. The idea here is to put minimal sized electrodes in a network within a brain through only minimal intervention to be able to read and write into the brain function in real time, remotely. And then of course you also have the things that are a little bit more traditional. If we talk about things that can be operable in the biochemical space, we ordinarily talk about drugs, bugs, toxins, and ever more we're considering devices. I can disrupt an individual from the level of their cell to their system and disrupt individuals on a variety of levels, from individuals all the way up to the social fabric. Target a specific individual, change or eliminate that individual with very little attribution and trace, and be able to leave prior to any attribution. Drugs can be exceedingly specific, and as I'll show you in a moment, can be very, very much used to individualize weaponology in terms of what we call precision pathology or precision effect. And by affecting the way that brain is built and the way it functions, influence in ways that are kinetic and non-kinetic, the attitudes, beliefs, thoughts, emotions, activities. Look at the power that understanding tools and techniques the brain sciences afford. We also see the use of biodata as a viable weapon. Manipulating biodata so that I can then put into your particular medical records subtle information that may change the disposition of whether you're sick or not, change how you're treated influence the postures that go to you in terms of insurance, care, viability for military service. By altering that information, by changing those data, by purloining those data, I essentially changed the you of you. And I can do that in very subtle and insidious ways. Furthermore, I can do that on a variety of different levels that can affect key individuals so that in fact your medical record changes to so thereby render you incapable or at least invalid to be able to serve in a way you're serving. Or I can do that on a much larger scale groups, populations. And if I change those data, I change the way you're being regarded and treated. And I can do that in one of two ways. I can do it in such a way that you're gonna be regarded in a negative sense, or I can do that in such a way that I'm gonna treat you incorrectly. If I say, for example, you have a particular allergy or you have a particular disorder, you will be treated for that. And that could then harm your health and your stability in both a short wars approach as well as a long wars approach. One of the newest developments is that nanoparticulate matter can be stabilized for distribution. If you're not aware of what nanoparticulate matter is, it's that matter which exists on a scale of well, one times 10 to the minus ninth. Very, very small, smaller than a cell. And we can manufacture materials that have discrete properties that can be controlled by virtue of bioengineering and their physical chemistry. I can create small robotic units, controllable robotic units at the nanoscale, and that these two can be aerosolized to create a nanoswarm of biopenetrable materials that you cannot see, that can penetrate all but the most robust biochemical filters, 
that are able to integrate themselves through a variety of membranes, mucous membranes, and wherever, mouth, nose, ears, eyes, can be then uptaken into the vascular system to create clumping, can affect the vascular system of the brain, or can directly diffuse into the brain space, and these can be weaponized. And they can be done in such a level that their presence is almost impossible to detect, and as such, the attribution becomes exceedingly difficult to demonstrate. We've come to the precarious position of opening the proverbial can of worms of if, how, in what ways, to what extent, and when these techniques and technologies will be used in weaponized intelligence and national security agenda. Are civilian ethics even viable any longer? And if we engage military ethics, what military ethical principles will we engage?